right, friends, welcome back to our Bible study in Revelation. And today we're in chapter 4, and I've got a question for you. There's a prayer that you have probably prayed at some point in your life that includes a line, Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Maybe the most famous prayer, the Lord's Prayer, we pray it on Sundays. Some of you pray it during the week. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we want things on earth to be... Um, a reflection of what's happening in heaven. Well, then it begs the question, what's happening in heaven? So far, what we've seen is we've seen some things about what's happening on earth, specifically what's happening in seven churches that this vision has addressed. Then, in chapter 4, John is ushered into a new stage of the vision when, after this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. The first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. John is brought up in this vision into the throne room of God, and he's given a picture of what's happening in heaven. All right, you're going to read through this, and I want to give you a couple of things to be looking for. One, notice this. When it describes the one who is seated on the throne, and you'll see this in the rest of Revelation also, notice how careful this vision is to not describe God in any way that would leave you thinking that he is an old white man with a beard seated on the throne, which is the way that a lot of us picture God. But John is so careful to depict what he sees. Remember, he, he has the task inspired by the Spirit of writing down what he has seen. He is so careful to not depict God as this really great human being. The closest he even gets to that is at one point, there's a scroll in, in God's hand. But it's like he falls all over himself to make sure that he's not painting the picture of God being a human being. This is very, very important because for uh, the Romans, who worshiped their dead emperors as gods, who even deified the living emperors, who worshiped gods who uh, were kind of fickle, who had all kinds of uh, emotions that kind of came and went, who were often at war with each other. They worshiped gods who were gods that um, were like great beings within creation. They were like greater versions of humans. We might think of them as like superheroes or like Marvel superheroes. No, 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 no. John is so clear to, to remind that the God that we worship is a God who is completely different from, from us. It would be as if you created a Lego village, and a uh, big Lego village, and then the Lego figures were talking about you, and they could only imagine you as like the greatest Lego figure possible. But no, 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 you're not a Lego, you're something made completely different. And of course, the difference between uh, a Lego and you is nothing in comparison between the difference in us and God. But God is completely other than creation. This is really, really central uh, to, to John's vision, that he is not the greatest thing within creation, but it is him, the creator, and then everything else. So where does the throne sit? The throne sits at the center because everything else is around it. What's around it in heaven? Well, you've got these heavenly creatures. You've got the four living creatures. You get 24 elders, not in chapter 4, but in other places you have angels. And all of these things are around the throne. God is at the center. And look at these four, uh, 24 uh, elders. So these are spiritual beings, but they themselves, all the things we're talking about, they themselves are also created. And you'll see this along the way, so it's, it's, it's explicit. That they are spiritual beings, but they are also created beings. 24 elders, these are 24 rulers, that's why they have crowns. But even though they are rulers in heaven, what do they do with their crowns? They lay their crowns down before the throne. Because they recognize, as great as they are, and if we saw them, we would like lose our minds, as great as they are, their authority comes from the Creator. And their worship can only be directed in one place, back towards their Creator. You get this vision of heaven, and right at the center is not human beings. And right at the center is not the Roman gods. Right at the center is not Caesar. Right at the center is the creator God around which everything else functions. What's right in heaven? What's right in heaven is everybody knows who's in charge, and they are not questioning his authority. He is the one 
at the center. He is in charge. So your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, it's not that way. On earth, we all have got our own little fiefdoms. I mean, most of us today, we just have little small fiefdoms. But, you know, things that we're, we're in charge of. You know, at the time, you had the Roman emperors. I mean, those folks were in charge of a lot. And they definitely saw themselves as the center of the universe. And their subjects, who did they think sat at the center of the universe? Caesar does. Or other things within creation. What's wrong on earth is that we fail to recognize so frequently, even if we got it right in our minds, we fail to recognize so frequently that there is only one on the throne. He's the creator of it all, completely different than us, and he can be trusted. What's wrong on earth is that we've got our own little fiefdoms, and either we put ourselves at the center, or we put somebody or something else at the center. And what it means for things to be on earth as they are in heaven is that we get God right back in the middle. Short, little succinct line. The number one thing that we can do with our lives is to put God at the center of our lives. Now we're going to talk a whole lot more about what specifically was wrong on earth at the time of the Romans. We'll talk a little bit about what specifically some of the things are wrong here and how it is that, that, that we can be a part of God's work of his kingdom coming more fully on earth as it is in heaven. But at the center of it, before anything else, is just the recognition that we can't do anything except um we can't do it not except we can't do anything apart from recognizing who truly is the authority and orienting ourselves towards him he gets a glimpse of heaven john does and seated on the throne is the creator it's not caesar it's not any of these greek gods no no, no. at the center is the creator god he is the one who deserves our worship. So we're left recognizing if that's the way things are in heaven, then that's the way things should be on earth also. Uh, on Monday, we're going to find out um, a big twist in the plot because there is something else on the throne along with the God who is described in chapter 4. We'll find out who that is in chapter 5. God bless you, friends. We'll see you next time.